welcome or welcome back to the Citizen Channel where we all chat all things Manchester City, past, present and forever, of course, as, as long as I'm here, that's for sure. So we're going to talk, uh, yeah, a preview show today, guys, uh, Norwich City versus Manchester City. I'll be there, so if you if you are at Carrow Road on Saturday and you spot me, come and say come and say hello. Uh, obviously, it'd be, it'd be great to see you. Uh, yeah, 12th of February 2022, 5.30pm kickoff. I think we're leaving the Etihad at 9.15, so... Uh, uh, it'd be great to get down. It's going to be a long day, guys. I, I, I struggled. Struggled. I mean, I do actually. Um, the the last game we played, obviously Brentford. Uh, obviously, I was up at two to work. I do a six hour shift, and then obviously uh, do my work in the afternoon and go to the game. I was absolutely shattered. But so I'm going to be shattered against uh, for this Norwich one. But let's hope it's all worthwhile. Let's, let's hope it's it's a great one. Uh, please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notification, and all these vlogs are coming out. And of course, I do have a little film and TV channel as well. So if you want a break from football and you want to go over there, have a look at that. And please, if you can give us any thumbs up, always much appreciated. It's nice to get your comments and it's nice to know you're there by getting thumbs ups as well. So that'd be great. Yeah, so we'll have a look at, uh, this is match day 25, I think we call it. And uh, obviously have a look at Norwich, how they're doing. A slight a slight improvement, but we'll have more on that later. The old magician, of course, uh, Mr Smith. I'll be trying to predict our starting 11, which we got an interesting, interesting against Brentford. It'd be interesting to see what this starting 11 is as well. In charge, we've got Andre, Andre Marin, Marin is in charge for his 370th, apparently, top flight fixture. Uh, he's done 16 games so far, showing 54 yellow cards. So what's that in my maths? About three and a half a game, something like that. And three red cards. Yeah, so be careful, guys. We don't, we don't be getting anyone sent off. Uh, the last game, actually, uh, he did for City was the Crystal Palace game at the Etihad, which we lost, of course, 2-0. Uh, and, of course, he did send Mr Laporte off. So, uh, say no more. We'll have to be very, very careful. His linos are Richard West and Scott Ledger. Paul Turney is the VAR guy. And making his coffee at Stockley Park is Simon Bennett. And our fourth official is Mr Tony Harrington. Yeah, not a name I'm overly familiar with. Uh, previous meetings, yeah, last time out. Bit disappointing, guys. 14 for September 2019, a 3-2 loss, of course. Despite dominating the game, uh, Norwich, Norwich were actually won it quite comfortably. Took a two-goal lead and a Guerrero goal on the stroke of half-time didn't inspire us to come out in the second half and go on and win that game or at least grab a point because very early in the second half, they made it 3-1 and it was only the 88th minute, I think, when uh, Rodri popped up to get a, a City second goal, which was all too little too late. A very disappointing game from memory, that one. Our overall record at their place, we played 30, only won nine, drawn 15. So there's a lot of draws, guys. I'm a bit worried about that. Let's hope it's not a draw uh, when we play this game. Uh, won nine, drawn 15, and just lost six, though. So we don't lose many. But, yes, too many draws for my liking there. We don't we don't really need a draw. We had a draw at Southampton. We don't really need one here. Uh, scored 42 and let 37 in. Please check out my little History Boys feature. I look back at a game back in February 1993. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah high-flying Norwich City then. Yeah, they were, they were top for a, uh, three or four weeks at one stage in that season. Did very, very well. And they were actually third spot when we played them. Mike Walker was in charge. I think it was Mike Walker. Yeah, I think it was Mike Walker. Uh, of course, Mr. Reed Peter. To read was our player manager at the time. So I've checked that out, guys. The History Boys feature, anyway. And the odds to win the match, please. I don't condone gambling when the fun stops. Stop. City are one to six on. Not not the not the shortest odds we've ever been. A draw is fifteen to two generally, and a Norwich win is you can get sixteen to one. You can get the odd higher price elsewhere, but generally sixteen to one. So if you're a Norwich fan, I wouldn't put you off that. So please uh, check out my little odds feature as well if you get a chance and another win for the charity uh, with the Brentford game. So all all go, all going well. Fingers crossed. Keep supporting me, guys, and give keep your fingers crossed for these charity bets. Let's keep that pot pot going up and up. Uh, so how will it all pan out this game? Uh, yeah, a slight upturn for Norwich. We'll have a quick look at Norwich first. Of course, they won two of their last three league games. They actually drew the latest. Uh, they beat a broken Everton, let's be honest about it. And a good away win at Watford, which was really one of these, what they call, is it six-pointers? And they just had a home draw against Palace. Yeah, I just had a quick check check of that game. Uh, Pookie gave him a lead very early on. We have to, we'll have to watch him on Saturday. I know he's a bit inconsistent, but... 
he has a habit of getting odd goals against us, certainly uh, probably against us. I'm sure he scored last time we played. Uh, Palace did equalise eventually on 60th minute. A fantastic side goal. Please check any highlights you can for that. And then also check the highlights because he were awarded a penalty quite soon after. It's probably one of the worst penalties you'll ever see. And uh, Saha was trying to blame something as though he stumbled on the penalty spot. But it looked OK to me. It was just a pathetic, horrible penalty. And he just didn't... He, his balance wasn't right. That was probably the problem. But check that out if you can watch any of the highlights. But, yeah, I mean, really, Palace should have won it. Uh, Norwich got away with a point. So, yeah, and the thing about Norwich, they are, they are playing, not with confidence, but they're, they're playing with... Um, they're playing as though they're not panicking. And that that's as it should be because they're probably about... Seven or eight games ago, people said they were down, and obviously this little slight upturn has given them a little little spring in the step. They also had a good FA Cup win at Wolves, so that that folded well. So is Dean Smith? Yes, is he discovering this magic formula? Has he got his uh, starred hat on? Is it to uh, sort of rescue Norwich this season when all all looked dead and buried a few games ago? As I said, but it's a bit early, of course. It is I mean, unfortunately now they got they got sucked back into that bottom three. If you like. Uh, uh, after briefly escaping it for about a week or so and for a few days. And they are playing with confidence despite the lower position. So I expect them to have a go against us. I think they will have nothing to lose. They put it down as a loss anyway. So why not? In the same way, I thought Brentford might have had more of a go. Uh, below below them at the time I'm doing this vlog before the weekend, uh, Watford have a game in hand of just two points behind. They've got to win the game in hand, of course. They have. Burnley are three points behind, uh, but with three games in hand. But then again, Burnley are only sort of drawing at best against rubbishy teams like United. So there's no guarantees there. So uh, it still doesn't any guarantee that those two will take over uh, Norwich. But obviously, they're going to need someone from above them to, to slip, aren't they? Newcastle, Leeds and Everton are the immediate guys above them and all have played less games. So that, that's important. Newcastle may have just started to turn things around and Leeds are still picking up valuable points, even you know, even though they're not perhaps winning as many games as they'd like. They're still getting valuable points here and there. And it's possibly, possibly, the only team, uh, if you say, if you discount the bottom two be underneath Norwich, you might not have enough to climb out. It's only really Everton who are struggling at this point in time. They've lost four on the bounce and they've not got, obviously, no bounce evidence from the new manager bounce that we usually see these days. Obviously, he, he did beat a very poor Brentford in the FA Cup, as, as we know. Uh, and it's only really Everton that could come back into it. But again, I, I think Everton probably have too much. And what about their upcoming games? Well, after us, they've got Liverpool away and Southampton away. Uh, if they get one point from that, they'll be massive. I, I, I mean, Southampton are playing well. Obviously, Liverpool, I don't need to say much, do I? I mean, I, I think possibly they'll get zero from that. Then they got Brentford home and Leeds away. Yes, they might beat Brentford, but I, I think Leeds will be up for that. I think Leeds, so they were perhaps hoping for four points, but more likely... Yeah, uh, even Brentford will be up for it as well. I think you know they got they got to try and win their own game, so uh, they could get they could get four points, more likely three, possibly one. So uh, still a bit long way to go. But if you just look at that as the four coming games, uh, Dean Smith still needs to, needs his charges really to perform a little minor miracle to escape relegation. I think based based on what we're seeing at the moment. But at least at least the fans have had some hope. I mean that's that's a problem. I mean like me, I, I would have I would have been sort of uh, thinking, oh, we're getting relegated, and then when they give you that little sliver of hope that oh, we'll win a couple of games and you move up, move out of the relegation zone for a few days, and you get that hope, and it's it's the hope that kills you guys. It's the hope that kills you. So I don't know how Norwich fans are reacting, but. Uh, be interested. I know how I'd react, that's for sure. Let me know how you'd react as well as a, as a City fan. Are you in glass half full, glass half empty? Yep, as for us, let's move on to City. Yeah, interesting, interesting team against uh, Brentford. The only, only one or two faces that made you think, what's Pep doing? And we certainly can't take this one lightly. As I said, I think Norwich will have a go. I think, you know, obviously they'll try and defend, but I think they've got they've got enough uh, pace and youngsters to have a go at us as well. Uh, and hopefully Pep will get the team right, mix right for this one. Don't forget we've got a very important Champions League game coming up. We've had some discipline problems, which we saw. Mara seems to be OK. He's not been uh, slagged off for his night out, but obviously Grealish was on the naughty step by not playing. Walker's the interesting one. He was either on the naughty step or as someone suggested on Twitter, I was having a look, I was having a look today, uh, he could have been sort of trying to pan it out for the Champions League game where Walker can't play. 
So you may have put that team out last night to see uh, to to practice for this for the upcoming sporting game in the Champions League. A very good point. Uh, I, I sort of considered sort of uh, sort of very briefly considered that, but the more you think about it, there is a possibility. Uh, and of course, uh, obviously with this game. Would he do it again? Probably not. I expect Walker to play in this game, to be honest with you. Uh, obviously, fingers crossed, Edison's all right. Obviously, he took that little knock. He seemed all right on the night. You don't know overnight if he, he might be feeling it today. Hopefully, Edison will be fit. So, as I say, we still doubt so with Jesus and Palmer. We should still have a, a full-strength uh, squad ahead. And we can't take any chances with this one. I want. I need. I think we need the strongest team. As I say, whether Pep does some experimentation, I'm not too sure. Uh, after this, of course, after after the sporting game, we've got a home game against Spurs. Uh, but then there's a little a week break between that and the Everton game. So there's no reason for me uh, in any unless he's not playing players because he's angry with them or frustrated for whatever reason. There's no reason whatsoever. Uh, that he shouldn't be playing a full strength, full you know his best team that we could possibly put out there. And sometimes you perhaps have to think, yeah, all right, I'm a bit angry, but I want to do this, I want to do that. But as I say, Walker's a funny one, uh, of course, because he's going to have to, he's going to certainly miss the next two games against Sport, and then if we do get through, he'll miss he'll miss the next the first uh, first leg of the game after that, which is even more important, isn't it? If that's you know fingers crossed, we do get through. Uh, so yeah. So in the City 11 for this one, let me know what you think, guys. I would dress Grealish. Uh, obviously, he only didn't get on for that long, did he, against Brentford and didn't do too much. And I think he might rest Sterling because I, I imagine Sterling playing against Sporting, starting against Sporting. That's what Pep will do. And Sterling is one of his go-to guys in European competition, whatever his form sort of thing. I think Stones may miss out this time only on the basis that he's not going to use it as an experiment again. And obviously, Stones isn't going to be stuck at right back again as he was against Brentford. Uh, Jesus and Palmer, of course, are, are still as far as I want fit. And even if they, even if they came back fit, uh, he's not going to stick Jesus into the Norwich game. They're going to be on the bench at best. Uh, so I'll say, we'll see with Walker. If, if he plays him against Norwich, then obviously he was happy with the experiment and don't want to do it again. If he doesn't play against Norwich, perhaps he just wants to experiment a little bit more before we play Sporting Lisbon, but not at the expense of uh, giving up the Premier League, not at the expense of getting a three points at Norwich, surely. Uh, so my 11, let me know what yours are, guy. Yeah, yours are, guys. Edison, Walker, Diaz. Laporte, as I said, I think Stones will miss out because Walker's back in. Uh, Cancelo, Rodri, Gundo, and I put Gundo in there. Uh, yeah, I just think at Norwich, I think we're more effective. Uh, I think I think we we need him more at Norwich. Uh, KDB, Bernardo, Foden, and Mares. Yeah, so pro, pro, as I said, more or less Gundo's coming there, and Grealish has missed out further up the pitch. So that's my eleven. Um, as I say, I'll be happy again. If we get nine of those right, I'll be happy. If we get less than nine, I'll be disappointed. But at least, at least nine of that should I should turn out. It'll be very, very interesting to see what happens on the Walker situation. Quirky stats, guys, before we finish this. Yeah, some interesting ones this week with Norwich City. Uh, here we go. Norwich City have lost 13, my thanks to uh, Gold.com. I've uh, produced most of these. I'm just reiterating what they got, my thanks to them. Uh, Norwich City have lost 13 of the last 15 Premier League games against the previous season, season's champions, though both exceptions in this run were 3-2 victories against City in May 2013 and September 2019. They're horrible stats, aren't they? And I don't like some of these today. City have lost just one of their last 36 Premier League games against sides starting the date in the relegation zone with one thirty drawn five. Although that loss did come at, the, at Norwich in September 2019. Having lost their first away league game of the season 1-0 against Spurs, City are now unbeaten, of course we are, on the road in the last 11, one nine drawn 2. All three of our failures to win on the road have been uh, this season. I've seen, seen us concede first in the match, so let's keep uh, make sure Norwich don't score first. Eh? Smith is looking to become the first Norwich manager to go and beat him for four Premier League matches since Chris Uton in February 2013. That's a great stat. Uh, fantastic. So let's let's hope he doesn't do that. Uh, Pep, his four games against Dean Smith have all been won by an aggregate of 13-2. to two. Long may it continue. I think we're on the last two five nil, haven't we? But at our place, City's Ryan Stone has been directly involved in seven goals in his last seven Premier League games against Norwich, five goals and two assists. While teammate KDB has had a hand in four goals in the last two starts against the Canaries, two goals and two assists. 
Mares has scored in each of his last seven appearances for City in all competitions. The last player to score in more consecutive for the club was Sergio Aguero in January 2014 with eight. So if we get a penalty, pop up, he'll put it in the net. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, as I said, I'm in Norwich, so uh, uh, come up and say hello. And, of course, the match report, uh, it's going to be a long day. I won't be back till the early hours, and then I'll have to write the report. Up. I'll probably go straight to bed because I'll be shattered. So it's more or less the match report. A happy match report, hopefully, will be on Sunday. Uh, certainly Sunday lunchtime, I would imagine. So please join me for that. Push that notification. Tell your friends, please join me for that. Of course, that'll include the player ratings. Uh, Manchester Evening News, probably Stuart Brennan's. Uh, he tends to be doing them these days. And, and my own, of course. And tune in and see what you think and leave me your own as well. And please don't forget to check out those two other vlogs as well. The uh, Odd Show, where all the value and see what I'm doing for charity this week. See what see if we can get some more money in the pot. And, of course, uh, the pre the um, History Boys, of course, back, back in, take you back to 1993. Happy days. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Where are we going to do rest day? Have a great one. Look after yourselves. Look after your friends. Look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. To me here again on the Citizen Channel, I only ask one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.